tonight, from the entertainment capital of the world, the stars of Hollywood's film, television, and music industry are gathering to celebrate the birthday, life, and career of Elizabeth Taylor, one of the most legendary stars of all time. Arriving at the historic Pantages Theater in Hollywood are the performers on tonight's spectacular celebration. The King of Pop, Michael Jackson. The Bacon Brothers, Christine Baranski, Drew Barrymore, Carol Burnett, Cher, Harry Connick Jr., David Copperfield, Claudia Schiffer, Whoopi Goldberg, Hugh Grant, Elizabeth Hurley, Arsenio Hall, Dennis Hopper, Patti LaBelle, Shirley MacLaine, Madonna, Martina McBride, Rosie O'Donnell, Paul Reiser, Roseanne, David Schwimmer, Rod Stewart, Lily Tomlin, and John Travolta. Well, um, hi, this is great. Um, I, I should say straight off the bat that I am supposed to be Sharon Stone. And um, <laughs> I'm extremely sorry that I'm not. Um, I would very much have liked to be. Uh, and in fact, just briefly now in makeup, I, t I attempted to be as well, but it was not a success. <laughs> but I'm, no, I'm really honored and pleased to be here to, uh, as it were, welcome you, the audience, and you, uh, America, to this uh, celebration of life and a birthday party for my second favorite Elizabeth. Uh, I say that. Yeah. No, that's, that's not fair. It's not fair. She's actually my third favorite because I forgot the queen. Um, uh, Elizabeth Taylor. And uh, I. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan. I can't pretend I'm a really close friend, but she did very kindly invite me to lunch at her house here in Hollywood last summer. Um, I don't think she'll be inviting me again. Uh, <laughs> I was unlucky enough to be discovered uh, rooting around in her clothes closet after lunch. Um, I, I couldn't resist. I was in Elizabeth Taylor's house. What was I supposed to do? But um, she was very nice about it, and I think partly because um, Shirley MacLaine was actually doing exactly the same thing. <laughs> Um, so anyway, I don't need to remind you what an amazing career it's been uh, from her, you know, in Lassie at the age of 12 to now at the age of 65 in terms of uh, being an enduring megastar and uh, being an international symbol for glamour and class and, of course, uh, as a tireless crusader uh, in the fight against AIDS, which is part of the reason we're all here tonight. I say I don't need to remind you, but just in case any of you are under three or um, <laughs> live under a rock, and I know there are a number of agents here tonight. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh, here uh, is a brief uh, retrospective. If the lady's naughty but proper, if the lady's chicer than chic, have a goes, If it. her escorts must wear a topper, and each man's the man of the week. If she rides around in a brand new foreign car, the chances are the lady's a star. If the lady's not 
utterly charming If the ladies show me with kings If her whims are close to alarming And it's known she's thrown a few things If they've got a drink with her name Caviar If the lady's someone With the same credentials Someone with the same essentials Someone who is worshipped From afar She's a genuine I've been in show business since I was ten Positive Sixteen is such a nice age to be. Totally. I'm twenty and Buck is twenty-six. Marvelous. I stopped counting when I was thirty-nine. Perfectly. Hell, forty's a child. Wonderful. I'm sixty years old today. She's a great big, great big Well, there it is. Um, you know, what a body of work. Um, let's face it, what a body. Uh, she's uh, dauntingly brilliant as an actress. She's uh, very funny. She's very nice. She's incredibly selfless. Uh, it's hard to sum it up or introduce her, really. Ludicrous. Uh, but there's, um, in the words of a London taxi driver who was bringing me to the airport last week, he said, I'll tell you what Liz Taylor is, Hugh. She's a solid gold diamond. And... Uh, it takes a bit of thinking about, but when you, when you do, it's, um, it's pretty good, actually. So here, ladies and gentlemen, the solid gold diamond uh, of the century, Elizabeth Taylor. Back to DreamWorks. <laughs> yes, I know a lot of you are wondering who I am. I know you're out there saying, I'm not sure, but if you squint, I think it's Joan Collins. <laughs> but nay, it's me, Cleopatra, the queen of denial. The woman who tossed the first Caesar. <laughs> and a few after him. The original Fertile Crescent. I've come back, Elizabeth, because I have a few important things to impart from the great beyond. A couple of things that Shirley MacLaine might not have told you. <laughs> because she's saving it for yet another book. <laughs> for 
first of all, I am here to tell you that jewelry is not, not the answer. <laughs> you can't take it with you. Trust me, I tried. <laughs> I was buried with all the stuff, and now most of it is in Candy Spelling's traveling case. <laughs> Second, and I feel very strongly about this, we need to put more women in power. Yes, you see. Thank you for agreeing. Egypt ran very smoothly when I was queen there. If you could get a queen to run this country, you might solve some of its problems. I forgot there was Newt Gingrich, but you know. <laughs> Thank you. You know, third, I had to come back to set the record straight. Anybody who's ever had a past life claims they were me. Nobody was ever just the cleaning lady, for God's sake. If I were ever going to come back, there is only one person that I would come back as, or whose body I would come back in, and that is Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> Who else has had so many men at her feet worn so much fantastic drag, <laughs> had such an influence on so many people, and is going to be remembered for centuries from now. <laughs> it's just you and me, babe. So, happy 65th, Elizabeth. And do not stop. Like myself, I'm 6,500, and 12 steps be damn girl. <laughs> Happy birthday. Miss Taylor, as always, you look beautiful tonight. And we've got some great birthday presents for you. We have film clips, um, we have public appearances, and some home movies that nobody's ever seen, but we're all very excited to see them this evening. Most importantly, I'd like to thank you and tell you that you've been an inspiration to me, not only as an actress, but in my work in the Female Health Foundation in the fight against AIDS. You've, um, you've been in this business since you were a child, and you still seem to enjoy it as much as ever. And um, so let's take a look at these clips with roles like these. Here we go. this from you. I loved it. Every awful moment of it, I loved. you've ever heard. I did go to bed with that young man. 
And I enjoyed it, Mark. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more than you'll ever know. Stand on it, I guess. Long as she can. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Taylor. You know, a lot has been said and will be said tonight about Elizabeth Taylor and her acting achievements and her charity work, the longevity of her career, her heavily chronicled private life. But time and time again, what will undoubtedly people will come back to is the obvious simple truth, uh, the thing you cannot get away from. The woman is beautiful. This is a beautiful woman. I wasn't involved with it, but thank you. I, and it's not just that she is stunningly beautiful. It is that she has been beautiful over these many years. When she, it started, when she was a tiny child, people would look at her and say, that is the most beautiful child in the world. And it went on from there. That is the most beautiful little girl on a horse in the world. That is the most beautiful teenager walking a collie without a leash in the world. <laughs> it would continue through the years. Why, that's the most beautiful Park Avenue prostitute in the world. <laughs> Why, that's the most beautiful queen of Egypt in the world. <laughs> the fact is, Elizabeth Taylor always looks sensational, no matter what is going on around her. Let me illustrate. All right, now here she is in Sri Lanka. Everybody else has the plague. <laughs> but she looks sensational. They're dropping like flies, no problem. She, at most, has a little headache. Tiny headache is all you can see. Now, here she is. She's washing sheets. Who looks that good washing sheets? Certainly not this guy, who sees, him, sees her and has to touch himself in an impure way and suddenly feels ashamed. <laughs> he feels dirty, he has to run away. She yells after him, oh, that headache is back. A little bit. <laughs> here is Elizabeth Taylor in the middle of a herd of stampeding elephants. Now, as you can see, she's upset because the butler is being, is being eaten by the elephants. It's a loud, terrible noise because the butler does not go quietly, as you can see. Still, a beautiful Elizabeth Taylor. Now, this is my favorite, watch this. She runs away, slides right into first, and amazingly, comes up, safe, and one hair out of place. Okay. <laughs> she wakes up, one hair, one hair out of place. The same hair. You've got to do something about that hair. Now here she is, waking up for a soup. Not only beautiful, two hairs out of place. Okay, but no drool on the pillow, nothing. Just a stunning, <laughs> stunning woman. Not only lovely, but she wakes up with the strength to carry 200 pounds of gold bullion on her neck. <laughs> Smoking, hacking cough, still, radiant, lovely. Here she is having a nervous breakdown. Now you would think, a tough day, but no, the eyeliner mascara, perfect, there it is, unbelievable. <laughs> For decades, for decades, women all over the world, and frankly, a lot of men, have tried desperately to look like Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> Sadly, the results consistently fall short, and there is a reason for all this. No matter what you do, no matter how hard you try, you will never look like Elizabeth Taylor. And do you know why? She is Elizabeth Taylor, for crying out loud. You are you. It's not going to ever work out. 
That's just the way life is, and enjoy it. Ms. Taylor, happy birthday to you. Good evening. E.T., extraterrestrial, elegantly tutored, entertainingly tenacious, emotionally telling, explosively theatrical, eternally thrilling, endearingly tolerant, especially tonight. I'm delighted to be here to add my voice to the chorus in wishing this extraordinary talent, there's one I missed, a happy birthday. As my friend Marianne would say, after carefully making sure there weren't too many olives cluttering up her martini. <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor is what God would look like if he wore Valentino. <laughs> and now, from New York, where she is currently starring on Broadway, the unaffected and unadorned Whoopi Goldberg. The door, get it, darling. Damn it, Juanita, open the door. Oh, it's you, hello. <laughs> Come on in, I've been expecting you. Greco, get the champagne. You know, it's so hard to get good help here in New York City. Come on in, Elizabeth, you look fabulous, darling. Fabulous. A kiss on my hand to make me quite cats and I tell about diamonds. Ooh, ooh. Hey, I'm here. Oh, under all the diamonds. Honey, forgive me if I sound a little strange, but I've got a cultured pearl stuck up under my throat. You know, I got four chains now instead of two. I feel like I know how an oyster feels now. Oh, yes, you in? <laughs> Just kidding. That's much better. You know, when anyone asks me who my inspiration is, I don't say Mother Teresa or Eleanor Roosevelt or even Harriet Tubman. They're all fine women. Well. Maybe fine isn't exactly the right word, but they're all distinguished women. But for me, there is only one woman who stands above all of them as an inspiration, not just for me, but for all womankind. Some of mankind, too. If you ever met Dennis Rodman, you'd know what I meant. And her name, no matter how many times she changes it, is Elizabeth Taylor. You know, I'll never forget the first time I saw Elizabeth. It was at a cocktail party, and she said, girl, you are sitting on a diamond mine. Well, I was so flattered till I realized I was sitting on her purse. <laughs> she has luck, you know, and I, she was lucky to get it back because, you know, I'm wide. Since then, we've been really good friends, and Elizabeth has coached me through all the high points of my career. When I was nominated for my first Academy Award for The Color Purple, which she kept calling The Colored People, I don't know why, <laughs> Elizabeth gave me such brilliant advice. She said, if you win, melt it down for a bracelet. I never forgot that. And when I eventually did win for Ghost, it wasn't as big as I thought, so I melted it down for a ring. <laughs> there it is. They change color when the heat is on them, like so many things. Now, how did these rich white women do it? I got a brooch wrapped around one of my dreads, and it's giving me a migraine. And I'm gonna have to go home now and take some of this jewelry off surgically. But Elizabeth, you keep on partying, honey, and don't worry about me, because I appreciate all the rocks, and you keep them coming. And seeing as you have done so much for me and so many other people, many of them are in the audience tonight. I have something really special for you. You've made it to the big six five, and I want to do this from my heart. I'd like to present you with a little something no one else would dare to give you. Your first social security check. Now listen, girl, don't you go spending it in all one place. Unless, of course, it's Harry Winston. Happy birthday, Elizabeth Taylor. May you have many, many more. I love doing magic on the grand scale, but I also love the intimacy of pure sleight of hand. Uh, this, is the, this is the unplugged section of the show, and for this, I need to borrow a lady from the audience uh, with a ring on her finger. Please, 
good. Very, very much. I'm going to show you uh, my very first uh, trick. When, when I was a little kid magician, these are the shoes that I wore. <laughs> these are air coppers. You put them on, you pump them up, and you're gone. <laughs> this shoe goes into my back pocket. Hey, let me get rid of my jacket here. <laughs> yeah. Good. Into my back pocket. Would you reach down inside? Make sure it's empty. Take your hand. Reach all the way down the bottom, please. All the way down the very, very bottom. Bottom there, if you would. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good, good, good. Thank you. Okay. C could you do that again, please? <laughs> it's very, very nice. I, I love that. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> it's Copperfield, not Copperfield. <laughs> no, why not? You're right. You're right. This shoe goes into my back pocket just like this. I need to borrow one of your rings. Uh, do you mind if I borrow uh, one? Oh, the big one would be good, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Very, very nice. You know, with this magnifying glass, it doesn't get any bigger. It's uh, really an amazing thing. I need you to um, uh, take this, please. We're going to get a nice, tight shot of this ring. What does that shot remind you of? The Home Shopping Network. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get a nice tight shot of the ring. Watch closely. The ring goes into my hand. Watch. Watch very closely. Low, please. Right there. Again. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> My hands have never left your sight, but the real cool thing is, your ring has reappeared back on your finger. Check it out. That would have been good, Wrong though, huh? <laughs> well, my, my, my hands have never left your sight. When I was a little kid magician, I used to make my friends' rings disappear. Then the rings would reappear tied into the laces of my... You're really beautiful, by the way. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, when, when I, uh, the rings would reappear tied into the laces of my shoes. Remember that little shoe in my back pocket? Yeah. I haven't touched it. I haven't come close to it. But I want you to look. Just look. Because tied into the laces of that shoe is a ring. It's really on there. Is that your ring? It is. Give her a big round of applause. I have known Elizabeth through 42 birthdays in this town. You can work out that math. <laughs> she has always been very, very clear that above all, ours is an industry of show business. And with that clarity, she has played the game better than any of the rest of them. She has come up with the biggest sweet smell of success in the fragrance world. This is as important to Elizabeth as everything that's gone before, and for very good reason. Elizabeth's fragrance line is the only successful celebrity franchise in the history of sweet smells. <laughs> so as one who has watched my friend operate with shrewdness and this incredible clarity, I say with undying admiration, thank you for your starshine, which inspires all of our hopes toward our own longevity. And thank you for proving that capitalism does not have to be cutthroat if it has a person who is at the head of the profit making who is loving, fair, and more than decent.
many, many, many happy returns for another thousand lifetimes. It will be such fun. I know. As those who play them know, games are often played at birthday celebrations, and the latest to hit town is a little party game called Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yo. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Dave. <laughs> the premise of the game is that everybody in the entertainment industry is intrinsically linked down the line of life in one way or another. To illustrate the game, let me give you a few examples of how you can link Kevin to Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor starred in Butterfield 8, a picture that co-starred Eddie Fisher. Eddie's daughter, Princess Leia, is Carrie Fisher, who wrote the novel Postcards from the Edge. Carrie Fisher was portrayed in the film version by Meryl Streep, and Meryl Streep starred in The River Wild with Kevin Bacon. That's true. Yes. One more time, Elizabeth Taylor starred in a movie called The Only Game in Town with Warren Beatty. Warren Beatty's sister is Shirley MacLaine. Shirley won an Oscar for her performance for Terms of Endearment, a film that co-starred John Lithgow, and John Lithgow played the father in Footloose who would not let his daughter, Laurie Singer, go to the prom with everyone. Kevin Bacon. <laughs> now we, we could go on for days, but I, I don't want to. So, hoping there will be millions more of you out there to play Six Degrees, it now gives me a great degree of pleasure to introduce Martina McBride and a couple of guys who are separated by just one degree, Michael and Kevin Bacon, the Bacon Brothers. Thank you, David. Thank you. Elizabeth, uh, thank you very much for inviting us to your uh, party. We are trying to... Uh, choose one of our songs that we thought would uh, be appropriate and uh, this song kind of reminded us, uh, made us think of you because uh, it's about uh, women's inalienable rights, uh, the right to change their minds and uh, it's called A Woman's Got a Mind to Change. They say the only sure things in this life are death and taxes. Well, I don't agree, I beg to differ, cause the fact is, I once met this old wise man on a hill. Never gave his uncle Sam a damn dollar bill I said, are you afraid to die? He said, son, what you talking about? Well, I'll be coming back Is that dog you walk in there? Is only one thing in this world that you can count on There's only one thing you can lay A woman's got a mind to change And I said a woman's got a mind to change We had our fling, we had our thing But she went back to Mr. Right I cried some tears, I drank some beers, I got in bed, I turned out the light. And then I heard this key inside my door. Familiar footsteps just kind of moved across my floor. Oh, baby, I thought you said that we were through. I changed my mind. I'd rather be with you. 
birthday, darling. I give you a big hug and a big kiss, and I thank you so much for dedicating your day to such an important cause. Now, just between the two of us and the 20, 22 million people watching, I want you to know how much I've admired you as an actor. First, there's the, the phenomenon of being a Hollywood star, which you wrote the book, but then there's Elizabeth Taylor, the Academy Award-winning actress. Now, through the years, you've given us so many memorable characters and so many landmark films. So many women in conflict, so many passionate, larger-than-life, glamorous women, and such classic films as Giant, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, A Place in the Sun, and one stunning and totally de-glamorized woman in your masterpiece, Virginia Woolf, which happens to be my favorite. 66 films and two Broadway hits. That's a mighty impressive score in anybody's playing field. Now, here's a scrapbook of your screen career highlighting the gifts that you've given all of us. I give you my love, and I give you my best wishes. Wouldn't you like to go to America and act in the cinema? Might be fun for us to go and see me doing things in the pictures. As a child, I loved the fantasy world that I was thrown into. I went from child to young adult ingenue, then to leading lady. to the beach and that awful noise they made the noise of musical instruments all made of tin i guess you're about the best looking gal we've seen around here in a long time i think pretty soon i think i've seen them down here i thank you jed that's a very nice compliment and I'm going to tell my husband I've met with your approval. Oh, I know it's ungrateful of me, but sometimes it scares the living daylights out of me. You mean uh, like walking down the aisle, huh? Yeah. Every time I think about it, I break into a cold sweat. Without a treaty of alliance with Egypt, you could not hold the territories under your command. True? Possibly. Then, Lord Anthony, you come before me as a suppliant. If you choose to regard me as such. I do. You will therefore assume the position of a suppliant before this throne. You will kneel. You're still blaming me for Skipper's now, death? Don't you know that I could kill you with this crutch? Good Lord, man, do you think I'd care if Skipper you did? and I had a friendship. Now, why won't you let it alone? It's got to be told. But I don't want to hear it. It's got to be told and you never let me tell it. I love you, and that's worth fighting for, not Skipper. Skipper is dead, and I'm alive. Maggie! Maggie the cat is alive. I'm alive. George, who is out somewhere there in the dark, who is good to me, 
whom I revile, who can keep learning the games we play as quickly as I can change them, who can make me happy, and I do not wish to be happy. Yes, I do wish to be happy. George and Martha. Sad, sad, sad. been so long since I've thought about myself as an actress. I, along with the critics, have never taken myself very seriously. <laughs> My craft, yes, but as an actress, no. But I wasn't all that bad, was I?
love you more. met Her Majesty. <laughs> Excuse me, but really meeting you, Elizabeth, was like meeting royalty. I was a nervous wreck because I was wondering how one of movies, the movie's greatest sex symbol would get along with an itty-bitty small screen goddess. But not to worry, we worked together on a television picture called Between Friends, and much to my delight, friends we became. I would, uh... oh, you saw it. Uh, I would even say bosom buddies, but I dread to think what the globe might do with that one. Uh, <laughs> along with the gazillion things I learned to love about Elizabeth was her earthy, sense of humor. Um, we'll show you what we mean. Actually, we put together a few G-rated samples of Elizabeth's way with a laugh, uh, because this is uh, ABC. The first, uh, if you can believe it, is from the classic TV game show, What's My Line? And Elizabeth was the secret guest. Are you then primarily a screen star? Well, I guess you would say so, uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> do you play uh, leading ladies, uh, romantic leading ladies, rather than just comedians? Oh, I just love those romantic roles. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me put it this way. Is your husband Michael Wilding? Oh, he sure is. And then you must be beautiful Elizabeth Taylor. Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> Here's, here's one of my favorites. Uh, Elizabeth does Johnny, the Johnny Carson show. You made your first movie when you were, I think, nine years old. But you've endured, and there's been this fascination. Have you ever considered why that is? It's, that's why it's kind of a miracle that I am actually going to be 60. Yeah. I've uh, almost it, huh? died a couple of times. Yeah. I've read my own obituaries. They were the best reviews I ever had. Wow. <laughs> Did you ever think in your career of marrying a comedian? I mean, no. They were most of them comedians. <laughs> well, nobody likes to have a marriage that does not work. And I've often made jokes about mine because I think sometimes by and doing that... And mine, too. Yes, I have. <laughs> well, I'm a Pisces, and we're very sensitive. Yeah, what does that mean now? That's... I was married to a Pisces once. I'm sure you were. Oh, I was. Everybody's all-time favorite. Uh, this one stars Elizabeth Richard, The Ring, and became one of the highest-rated episodes in the history of Here's Lucy. She's got your ring on her finger, and she can't get it off. I've got to have that ring for the press party, love. I have an idea, love. <laughs> but, it's, but it's pretty wild. So you'd like to see the ring? Elizabeth, you can do it all. Happy, happy birthday. We all love you so much.
Hey, let's not start any rumors, okay? I'm escorting him. Yeah, and I'm loving it, everybody. I'm loving it. <laughs> well, before Harry starts, I just want to say how important this evening is to me tonight. You know, HIV has also hit a lot of women. Um, we don't hear a lot about the sisters, the girlfriends, the moms who have been infected. But Elizabeth keeps reminding us it can happen to everybody. That's right, Claudia. We're here to celebrate your birthday, Elizabeth, and you do look really gorgeous tonight. But also to tell you how much we believe in your work. In fact, the song we're going to do is a song I wrote. I thought it would be appropriate to sing to you tonight. It's called Reason to Believe. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome New Orleans Ambassador of Funk, Harry Connick Jr. All right, now let's turn this into a party up in here. Put your hands together, come on. Feel good. My eyes getting heavy, hope I can make a bed tonight. I go to sleep alone, my true love stays unknown, yeah. My life's an open book, it starts on chapter nine. I'm fine, a tangled web is easy and a weak. Well, you may not know my reason, but I got reason to believe. Fortune told by four tongue lady. She told me I don't mind to what I paid her. I left the feeling worse than I did when I came in. And I know one now, then I find out later. Hey, I wish I had an easy mind and a pretty girl to hold my hand. Seems the closer that I get, the water is wet And this lonely life of mine Is the best I've ever had It's not bad, no My clothes the only thing that's on my sleeve You may not know my reason You may not know my reason You may not know my reason but I got a reason to believe. Come on. Kind of a trick. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? You're excited too, huh? I, I'm excited because I, I've been in love with this lady ever since I first saw her in Rain Tree County. Anybody see the movie? She played, yeah. She played a character that thought she might be part black. She had a nervous breakdown over that. I didn't blame her though. I'd have a nervous breakdown if I thought I was only part black too. Depends on which part, of course. <laughs> when you think about Elizabeth Taylor, you think about the story of a survivor. At an age when a lot of people think about retiring, she decided to take on the most passionate cause of her life, the fight against AIDS. With over 29 million people infected with HIV worldwide, we've got to keep talking. We've got to all keep talking. The message is clear. Safe sex, period. Safe sex. Elizabeth, your love and your, con your, your, your concern for the world is unconditional. Happy 65th. Have yourself a great birthday. And 
And now I get the pleasure of unwrapping something really special. She's one of my best friends in the world, so I love this moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Patti LaBelle. Of your smile will light the dark. 
dawn will color all my dreams. And you know what color my dreams are, Elizabeth? A one, two, three, four, lavender blue, dilly lavender. I'm talking about jeepers, creepers, regimenting peepers, jeepers, creepers. Where'd you get those? I do anything for you, miss. Anything because you is everything to me. Take it down, boys. Elizabeth, you are too marvelous for words. And speaking of words, I'm at a loss for them. Being in your regal presence, I'm not my usual self-assured self. You, babe, are royalty. Ever since we were kids, and I saw you and Lassie come home, I've been crazy for you. And you, Roddy, are one lucky dude. Yeah, get out your hankies, because here's the sad part. There's always been a dude between us, Elizabeth. You're a dude magnet. We're helpless. Chakunk, chakunk, gunk, gunk, chakunk. That old Taylor magic has got me in its spell. Those gorgeous eyes makes me wish I was your eye drops. Ah, oh, too much. Hey, is it hot in here or is it me? It's me. I'm too sexy for my tie. Too sexy for my tie. Too sexy for my shirt. Heaven. I'm in heaven. Heaven, my baby. Your old woman. Hey, 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 Glenn, Glenn. Let's go get two anchor. Paul made me promise never to do that song. Seriously, Elizabeth, now that you and I are traveling single O, I want to say to you, oh, when a man loves a woman, can't keep his mind on nothing else. He'll change the world for the good thing he's got. If she is bad, he can't see it. And you're bad, babe. <laughs> bad like Michael means bad. I'm bad. I'm bad. I'm really, really bad. I'm... <laughs> you know, I didn't mind that. Elizabeth, I, I hope I'm not out of line. Because you're once, twice, three times a lady. And there's something I'd like to give to you, lovely lady. Just for being a shining, shimmering you that you are. Isn't it rich? It just isn't fair. I'm singing my heart out to you, but the king of pops in my chair. <laughs> you don't have to put this on right now, Elizabeth. That's why God gave us servants. Oh. I see you, uh, you already have one. Just know that, I, that I'll always be there for you, Elizabeth. And if I ruled the world, I would always keep you safe and secure. You'd be by my side when I went on tour. 
and what a tour it would be. And now that I remember spring and all the joy that jewelry brings, I will be remembering the shadow of that. If you were going to select anybody <clears throat> to introduce the subject of Elizabeth Taylor and family, of course it would be me. <laughs> and they thought blue velvet was weird, right? <laughs> Actually, um, <clears throat> being an exemplary family man myself, there is a legitimate reason for me to anchor this spot, and I'm very proud of it. You see, after Rebel Without a Cause, uh, which was my first movie, my second movie was a little... Uh, a little Technicolor epic called Giant. And in Giant, I played Jordan Benedict III. And my mother uh, was Elizabeth Taylor, and my father was Rock Hudson. Of course, I've been totally dysfunctional ever since, but uh, <laughs> Elizabeth, you've been an attentive mother, a wonderful gal to work with, and uh, to thousands who bear the burden of AIDS, you defined what it means to be a loyal and faithful friend. Thanks for being there, dear movie mom, and, uh, and caring so much for so many. Thank you, and happy birthday. Well, if you fell in love and were close to someone, it was automatic that you got married. That and was the isn't. way I was brought up. That was, uh, those were my morals, and it just, no matter <laughs> how old I got, it was still like, you know, I had to um, legalize it. I'm a very committed wife. <laughs> I should be committed, too, for being married so many times. L is for the way you look at me. O is for the only one I see. V is very, very extraordinary e is even more than anyone that you adore can love is all that i can give to you love is more than just a game for two two in love can make it take my heart and please don't break it love was made for me and you. If marriage was a giant slalom, I mean, I'm a, I'm a bronze medal winner. <laughs> You're a gold medal winner, right? I mean, I put it that way. I've got the neatest kids, and we're a very close family. They're really sweet, wonderful people. There's not a mean bone in any of them. So I did something good. L is for the way you look at me. O is for the only one I see. V is very, very extraordinary. E is even more than anyone that you adore can love. Here's all that I can give to you. Is more than just a game for two. Two in love can make it. Take my heart and please don't break it. Love was made for me and you. Love was made for me and you. Love was made.
Thank you. Oh. Well, we've heard a lot tonight about Elizabeth's manifold achievements. But I must say, I think it's high time someone talked a little bit more about the quality without which she might never have become the person she is now. I'm referring, of course, to her Britishness. As Big Ben struck six over a foggy London morning 65 years ago, Elizabeth Taylor came howling into the world. And, as is the tradition with all British babies, was smartly told to cheer up and given a nice cup of tea and a chocolate digestive biscuit. <laughs> anyway, my message to Elizabeth from her native people is a simple one. Jolly well done. And here to reiterate that is another compatriot, even if he does come, regrettably, from the less desirable end of the island. Thank you. Have I told you lately that I love you? Have I told you there's no one else above you? You fill my heart with gladness Take away all my sadness Ease my trouble, that's what you do All the morning sun and all its glory Greets the day with hope and comfort too Take away all my sadness Ease my trouble, that's, that's what you do Happy birthday, Liz, from one brick to another Fatherhood, Michael, at last, well done Just close my eyes and I'm away And all that I so wants to kill you, baby It's only a heartbeat away When I need love I hold out my hands and I touch love I never knew Miles of empty space in between us A telephone can't take the place of your smile But you know I won't be traveling forever It's cold out, but hold out And do like I do when I kneel I hold
There's so much, so much I want to touch you tonight But you're only a heartbeat away I thank you to celebrate a woman that I admire, an artist that I respect, and a humanitarian that constantly amazes me. 13 years ago, when the word AIDS was barely whispered, and before our government leaders dared to address the problem, Elizabeth Taylor got mad. And through her outrage and concern, she gave a desperately needed public voice to this dreaded disease. As Elizabeth spoke out, Life, in all of its irony, galvanized her message, for it was at this time that Elizabeth learned that her beloved friend, Rock Hudson, was dying of the terrible killer, AIDS. I went to the hospital to see him quite a few times. It was like God had taken him into another room and he seemed very at peace and his memory had sort of channeled itself into the past and he could remember all kinds of things that tickled him and made him laugh. He didn't know that he was dying. God had taken that away from him. He sat on his bed the night before he died, and he was in a coma, and he didn't know. HIV transmission. She is one of the heroes. Where is the government helping us? Where is the government helping its people? She's a fighter, AIDS activist for a lot of people who can't speak up for themselves. Everyone is vulnerable. No one is safe. Anyone can be attacked. It is not just a minority disease. It belongs to all of us. I think Elizabeth must be a very compassionate, very caring. I, I, I think it's pretty obvious that this is a very personal fight to her. And you can just see that when you see how much her um, foundation is done. Well, if it wasn't for the AIDS Healthcare Foundation and people like Elizabeth Taylor's AIDS Foundation, I might not be sitting here talking to you. Well, the important thing about the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation is that they were with us when we really were starting to provide meals. I've never met her. I just see her on TV and I see ads and pictures, etc. The fact is, her hand still opens the door to my apartment when the food is delivered. Taking care of the poor and feeding the sick is the highest precepts of my religion. She is doing God's work. We will win. We must win. We must win for the sake of all humanity. Hi, 
Hi, Elizabeth. You look so beautiful. Um, <clears throat> when I was a little girl, I wanted to be as beautiful as Elizabeth Taylor. I wanted to ride horses with my long, lustrous hair trailing behind me. I wanted to swing on a swing set with a velvet dress on. I wanted violet eyes and translucent skin. I wanted a 16-inch waistline. <laughs> and I wanted Montgomery Clift, Paul Newman, James Dean, and Rock Hudson to put their arms around it. <laughs> a girl can dream, can't she? I'll never forget watching A Place in the Sun for the first time. I don't know, I must have been about 11 or 12. And there's a scene in this movie where Elizabeth and Montgomery are going to kiss finally. And they come together. I don't know if they're dancing. They put their arms around each other. And their lips are barely touching. And she looks up into his eyes with this look that that just kills me every time I see it. And, and seriously, every time I see the movie, it has the same effect on me. Um, I, I was so absolutely knocked out by her beauty. I don't know what it is. I think it's this, this wondrous light that radiates from her, and it always takes my breath away. Much to my regret, Elizabeth Taylor has stopped making films but her light continues to shine in a much more wondrous fashion. Without accolades and fanfare, without a movie studio behind her, without the star-making machinery of Hollywood, and without applause. Since 1985, she has worked tirelessly to raise money for AIDS, to raise awareness for AIDS, to enlighten Congress about the need for a needle exchange, to shake up the United Nations about educating third world countries. And so tonight we honor you, Elizabeth, for your courage, for your strength, for your convictions, for your compassion, but most of all, for your inspiration. By sharing your light, you have unconsciously given us permission to do the same. You are the most golden of stars. Happy birthday.
want to thank you all for being here, for supporting me, for allowing me to be with my family on this, my birthday, which I'm not here to celebrate. I'm here to celebrate all the people in the world with AIDS. And this function has enabled us because of you and your generosity and your big hearts. It's enabled ETAF to go places all over the world, Nairobi, Brazil, in places in America, places that you haven't even seen or heard about. And because of you, they will be touched, they will be fed, they will be nurtured with your love. And I thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank you.